Guess what, Lions? For as little as $5 a month, you can get access to exclusive bonus audio content and help this program grow by joining the Lions of Liberty Pride. To learn more, head over to lionsofliberty.com slash support. Welcome to Electric Liberty Land here on the Lions of Liberty podcast, your weekly shot of culture, comedy, and Liberty with your host, Brian McWilliams. Oh yeah, what's booking down, people? Welcome to Electric Liberty Land. I am Brian McWilliams. And you might be able to tell I have figured out my microphone. Yes, my new microphone that we have been able to purchase because of your patronage, not only you everyday listeners, but also our very special Pride members. Thank you guys so much for allowing me to upgrade my microphone and now (laughs) figure it out to the point where my audio levels are uh, just peachy keen. But I will tell you what's not peachy keen, the state of the world. But before we get into that, this is episode number 40. So guys, please check it out. All the show notes, all the embeddable files, links to our merch, links to our Lions Pride, all that stuff. uh, That's over at lionsofliberty.com forward slash ELL40. So clearly today's episode is going to concentrate for the most part on Las Vegas and what occurred there where a man named Stephen Pollard had rained bullets down on a crowd that was thousands deep, injuring at least, they were saying 500, but that's also including people that were injured or killed in a stampede of people as people tried to rush out of this concert area. But he himself killed at least 50 people from bullet wounds. He had been stationed in the 32nd floor of one of the towers at Mandalay Bay, which was across the street from the concert facility. And uh, again, outdoor concert, just a a horrible act of violence, um, a disturbing assault on people's ability to just go and, and congregate in public and not worry about it anymore. Now, There has been no shortage of people trying to jump on this and politicize it immediately. I uh, pulled one instance, which is one of the more egregious and pathetic examples that I've ever seen, which is from Hillary Clinton. Let me just read to you what Miss Clinton said. And this, again, is hours after this event happened where hundreds of people were injured, where dozens of people were killed. Our grief isn't enough. We can and must put politics aside, stand up to the NRA, and work together to try to stop this from happening again. Now, how can you, in one sentence, tell people they have to put politics aside and then tell them in the exact same sentence they have to stand up to the NRA? (laughs) <laughs> to make sure this doesn't happen again. And again, I'm not going to try to, I, I, I don't want to make light of the situation, although I am trying to keep this like, you know how I am. I try to uh, not to bring it too, too far down this road, even though it's a very sad uh, and controversial issue. But just, I, I read that tweet and I was like, you have to be goddamn kidding me. I mean, are you, I, and I know, I know she's stupid. I mean, that's, that's not a doubt. I, I, how, but how just obnoxiously ignorant do you have to be to put that, to put that in a tweet and put that out there? We got to put politics aside, but also screw the NRA, which is a very political statement, of course, because it affects the organization that is the foremost leader when it comes to second amendment rights, whether or not you agree with that and, and then being in that position is, that's up to you. Um, and I'm not saying I'm the biggest fan of the NRA in general, but still clearly Hillary Clinton is saying that we need to put politics aside, but also we need to rein in people's ability to own guns and to purchase guns. And we need to attack the second amendment all in one very ignorant tree. So that kind of thing is going on. And unless you've made a conscious decision to avoid social media. And to be perfectly honest, I have made a very conscious decision to avoid social media as I do almost regularly after things like this happen. Because frankly, it's already, it's been a rough day. I am not having a good day. Uh, I've got a ton of aggravation throughout my life right now. And the last thing I need is to go on social media and see the idiotic commentary from people that have no idea what they're talking about. People that have no clue what 
guns are automatic or semi-automatic or handguns or rifles or bolt action. They have no clue. They have no clue what the laws that exist are. They have no clue what things are actually in place to protect people from buying guns or to to, uh, prohibit certain people from buying guns or what restrictions there are and background checks there are on people that could have theoretically prevented uh, instances from occurring. Meanwhile, none of those things would have prevented this from occurring. And frankly, basically none of the regulations that are put in place or the checks or the restrictions could have prevented virtually any of the mass instances of murder that we've seen in the past few years. Or, Or largely in the past 25 years. The Brady Act went into effect in, or the Brady Bill in 1986. That restricted many, many, many guns in addition to putting certain other protections in a place like the background checks, those are still in effect. So all the stories you see about semi-automatic rifles being used, semi-automatic, those are legal. Even these things still have some restrictions on them. But again, those are one pull of the finger means one bullet comes out. It doesn't mean that you pull the trigger and five bullets shoot. That's automatic. That's a machine gun. And from the reports that have been coming out, this man had several illegal guns, at least from the experts that are analyzing the firing patterns. So it had to have been an automatic weapon or it had to have been a weapon that had been somehow adjusted, whether that is with an aftermarket uh, addition. They were saying is a device called a bumper stock, which can automatically pull the trigger faster than a human can do it, thus making a weapon into a quasi-automatic weapon uh, and allowing them to shoot far faster than you would otherwise be able to. But again, using an automatic weapon, that makes it illegal. And the government said that he illegally owned some guns, but many of the guns that they found in this hotel room were illegally owned. So again, I don't see what regulations are going to be coming to play here. But I'm going to get more into that a little bit later. For now, I just I just want to talk a little bit about the social media more because it is completely maddening to me to try to even I mean I, I scrolling through once I start to lose my mind because you've got these people on there that don't hesitate a second to start grandstanding you've got the Hillary Clintons of the world you've got the Mark dipshit Ruffalos of the world and Mark Ruffalo is a guy that I've always enjoyed watching as an actor but as a cautionary tale as to why actors unless they really know their shit should probably just shut the fuck up. Because Mark Ruffalo needs to shut the fuck up. Because he posted something, basically a comment, saying that the most gun deaths of any modern, remember, modern country are in the United States. Now, again, my issue with so many of these comments people post on Facebook or post on social media is that they take an argument and they don't qualify it with anything, or they take a statistic and they completely remove any of the outside data from it or any of the arena in which it should be argued out of out of the context. Like, it's just taken out of thin air. It's, it's like when you watch, like for Mark Dipshit Ruffalo's movies, if you see a quote for a bad movie and it's like, a real slobber knocker, you don't know what the context is around a real slobber knocker. It could have been, this movie is the biggest piece of shit, and frankly, I fought, felt like I was in a fist fight trying to make sense of it. It was a real slobber knocker. So, you know, in the context of that, sure, the Bentley is just, that's a real slobber knocker. Wow, it sounds like a great thing. But then in the context, it's actually terrible. And that's what these people like to do. Like, again, Mark Ruffalo is saying the U.S. has more gun deaths than any modern country. Okay, well, first off, let's define modern. Because I have a feeling your definition of modern is very, very narrow to the few countries that you like that don't happen to have a policy in place in which people can freely buy guns. I'm willing to bet that your definition of modern probably includes Europe. And that's probably it. Oh, and Australia. Don't forget Australia because people love to talk about how Australia banned guns after a mass incident. But what they don't like to tell you is that the murder rate still hasn't gone down. No, in fact, the murder rate actually has stayed the same. The violent crime rate is still up there because people still want to kill each other. Go figure. When you get rid of guns, you don't get rid of a motive for killing. 
You don't get rid of what makes people actually want to commit violence against other people. That still exists. The one thing that you get is a reduce in suicides by guns. And yeah, you probably get some reduction in, uh, in murder rates by gun, although they still do exist. But you still have people stabbing each other. You still have people beating each other to death. You still have people hitting other people with cars, which is an incident that happened in Australia with the mass incident in the last few years where somebody killed eight people, I think, with a car and 30, 30 other people were injured. Just again, showing if you still have motive there, whether that is an individual motive, whether that is a motive based on somebody being insane or being jealous or terrorism, taking guns out of the equation is not going to solve that. The only logical argument I could see would be to say, okay, well, you can kill more people faster with a gun. And you know what? I can understand that argument because it's a powerful weapon. You can get a lot of shots off fairly quickly with it. And if you're a good shot, you probably could harm a lot of people. However, at the same note, a bomb also does a terrible amount of damage. And if somebody was in a position where he was overlooking a crowd from a window just like this and simply put together a few different bombs, he could do equally or greater the amount of damage that was done here. Same thing with these van attacks. I mean, you can do a lot of damage. This type of attack is made to, I mean, it, this guy clearly was making a statement. And, I, and I'm going to get into that a little bit later too. I'm trying to keep my strain of thought here fairly cogent because there's just so much to talk about. And again, this is the other issue with social media. When people bring up these arguments, it's so difficult to engage them because you have a limited amount of space and a limited amount, limited amount of time to actually get their attention, procure it and keep it. And of course, all that happens when you get into these type of arguments is that other people chime in. So you're fighting a 50 on one battle. Ah, but getting back to Mark Ruffalo real quick, because I want to finish this thought about old Marky Pants. So Mark's talking about modern countries. And I ask, I, so it, I always, these questions pop up. Okay, so modern means what to you then? And also, does that mean that there are countries out there that have far more deaths than the United States by gun does? Is, and, and it just doesn't count as modern in your mind? I mean, are we counting African nations? Are we counting Middle Eastern nations? Are we counting uh, nations that might be in South America? Because I know South America has far more gun deaths than the United States does. And I got to think that a lot of those countries probably still outlaw guns. What about their populations? I mean, we may have more gun deaths, but that doesn't necessarily mean that there's more gun deaths per person. And it also, again, the context of how many suicides are there? Because 65% of gun deaths are suicides. That's a lot. And it substantially lowers the amount of gun violence, which again, has been going down for decades. But again, this is, this is not what matters to them. They like broad stats that paint a picture that they can agree with so that they can go, we have to do something now. Meanwhile, doing something now is how we get things like the Patriot Act. Doing something now is how we get into endless wars in Afghanistan, in Iraq, led to the continued authorization of military force, which, of course, Congress was too cowardly to rescind because we had to do something now. All the worst things in life because we had to do something now and people are reacting in an incredibly emotional fashion, not thinking things through, not thinking what the long-term ramifications of something can be, not thinking how once you cede a liberty to government, you don't get it back. Look at Catalan, which I'll be talking about later as well. Just makes me so aggravated that sometimes I debate singing about it. Come with me on face B In a world of purest aggravation Oh, you'll see all the means That will add to your frustration all the friends you ignore Will post calls for government regulation What you'll see will 
justified explanation. Having an opinion doesn't mean that you should be right to spew it. Most things that you want are stupid. Want to change the world? This book won't do it. All right, that's probably enough for everybody, right? <laughs> I think we've all had enough. You don't even want to know how many times I recorded that stupid song to try to get it right before finally giving up and lowering the key for myself. Couldn't pull it off too high. You know what? But at least I know my limitations. Unlike so many of these idiots posting this garbage on Facebook and politicizing the shit out of it. And again, talking about things that they don't know anything about. Let's look at let's look at the, the common sense, right? Common sense gun laws, which people want, which is background checks on everybody. Those already exist. They want to close the quote unquote gun show loophole. You know what that is? That means individual sales between people. That's the, there is no gun gun show loophole. Doesn't exist. Not a thing. Everybody that a licensed gun dealer sells to has to get a background check, whether it's at a gun show or not. That's already a closed loop. The only way that these regulations don't apply is when it's an individual person making a sale to another individual person. And you know what happens in that circumstance? Even if there is a regulation on the books like they did, I believe, in Tennessee, people ignore it or they don't report it because it's a one-on-one transaction and they don't need to. The only reason somebody would require that is, if, again, if it's a licensed gun dealer who says, I can't risk losing my license if it gets found out. They don't apply. Not only that, it's also things like, okay, finger locks. Okay, great. So again, if you have a finger lock and a fingerprint identification thing on a quote-unquote smart gun, uh, that's still purchased legally. They still go through all the background checks. It's still not the illegal guns or the illegal modifications that this guy is using, the guy in Vegas or any of these other shooters. Again, they don't help. They don't apply. So you have all these people on Facebook, all these people posting that we have to do something now, that we have to stop this gun for. Meanwhile, again, Violent crime dropping, gun-related deaths still going down. You have these these outliers where, again, the odds of you falling out of bed and dying are far, far, far higher than you dying from a terrorist attack like this. Or a guy going nuts, because I can't even say it's a terrorist attack. A guy going nuts. Or a guy not even going necessarily nuts. Because I wonder, like, I was trying to figure out, I was looking up the different statistics to say, is this happening more? Are mass attacks and assaults of this nature happening more? And it looks like over the past few years, yes, the answer is yes to that. At least with this type of attack. Overall, everything's going down. Overall, there is absolutely no correlation between states that have higher gun ownership or more lax gun laws and more gun deaths. There's no correlation. I was looking at a uh, an article from the Mises Institute. Someone did research into it. Again, the correlation just simply isn't there. So that argument that people, again, people who don't know what they're talking about throughout there, easily debunked. It's not applicable. Las Vegas, for instance, by the way, people talk about their loose gun laws. Las Vegas has a incredibly low rate of gun homicides. 24 gun deaths a year is about what the average, which is 4% of deaths. There were more people beaten to death with fists last year at 25. That's true statistics. Look it up. So again, how exactly are we arguing that this is a, a major issue? If anything, I would argue, and this is what, you know, you may agree with me or you may not agree with me on this. Because I already know some of the people in our libertarian uh, email chain, our Lions Liberty chain, don't necessarily agree with me, but I personally look at this guy, 65-year-old white dude, gambler, whatever, obviously not a big social media user. You find like two photos of the guy, one in which he's just super hammered drinking shots. So you know he's not out there on social media. But you look at this guy and you go, okay, what motivation did he have to do this? He's clearly a gun owner. <laughs> I mean, obviously. But again, a lot of people are gun gun owners. A lot of enthusiasts are gun owners because they like to shoot or they believe in self-defense. So it doesn't really correlate to anything specifically. But the fact that this guy goes to a concert that's a country music festival makes me think. 
And it makes me think that he is intentionally targeting conservatives or people that he considers to be Trump voters. Because really, logically, you say, okay, country music is always associated with conservatism or conservatism and the right. This is a massive gathering of people that are likely on the right. And where else am I going to get an opportunity to blindly shoot into a crowd and have the most amount of people get killed that I don't like? And I say, okay, why did this happen? Now, we're still trying to figure out any motivation for this. They're saying that he just wired $100,000 to his girlfriend in the Philippines. They're saying he, he made a lot of big bets. Maybe he owed the gang, maybe he owed mobsters money. But again, owing mobsters money isn't a reason to go and shoot up a crowd of people after sending your girlfriend in the Philippines $100,000. All that indicates that he sent that money to her was that he was already planning to do this. So this was obviously something that he didn't just snap. And there's also evidence, by the way, and I think Jason Stapleton was talking about this. People just don't snap in general. Not, to the, not in this matter. This is clearly thought out ahead of time. You don't plan like this. You don't have all the guns. You don't have all the ammo. You don't prep. You don't send money overseas if it's not something that you had definitely planned out in advance. You knew exactly what you're going to do. And you had said, okay, I have a reason for this. Other than I'm just going to go shoot a bunch of people randomly because I owe gangsters money, which again makes no sense. So I think, again, this man was trying to kill conservatives. And who do I blame for this? Well, again, the reason I looked into the instances of these violent attacks going up is because I believe that's a combination of things. Number one, you're getting a handbook gifted to you by terrorists and their actions because you look at what happened in Manchester with the Manchester bombing. You say, okay, I've got a bunch of people in one place. I don't even necessarily have to be inside it. They're all there in a public space. I can just go right in. I can just shoot from above like I did at the 32nd floor. And you say, okay, so he's seeing this. He's getting fed this information from the media. He's getting inspiration from the media coverage of all this. But he's also getting encouragement because the way in which the media has constantly politicized and constantly damaged both sides' understanding of each other's, I believe, is actually feeding into this. And I believe it very strongly. While they're not saying, go out and kill people, you have people like Howard Dean shouting resist and shouting that, you know, people that are saying when, when the shooter fired upon the, Republic, the uh, Republican congressman, basically saying that, oh, well, you know, this is what you get for your policies. You've got people marching in the streets, calling everybody a racist and a Nazi and saying that people on the right are Nazis, that thus they are bad for society. They don't deserve to have rights. They deserve to be punched in the face. It's not too far of a step from punching somebody in the face that you don't know. And again, this man is a coward. He's shooting into a, a mass of people. He can't see anybody individually. He doesn't have to deal with seeing these people ripped apart from his actions. He is a fucking coward. But he goes up, takes these people out. Because again, he's viewing this, in my opinion, in my theory, as I'm going to go and shoot these people up because I have been told, I have been brainwashed that these people are the great evil. They are the great Satan now that have come to take our country by storm and I have to be stopped. They have to be stopped and there's no other way out. In people's minds, this is the point it's arriving to. Where they say, there's no other alternative. This is what's happening. I can only see this because, again, if you're only watching MSNBC, if you're only watching CNN or ABC or NBC or any of the mainstream media channels outside of maybe Fox News, who again went after Trump for a long time anyway, if you're seeing this, all you're seeing is the echoing effect of people saying this is the end of days for the way you think things should be. Everything's horrible. The country elected a racist. The country elected a bigot. These people are coming for you. They're coming for everything you believe in. They're coming to take rights away. They're coming to squash the rights of minorities. That action has to be taken. Hashtag resist. Resistance, by the way, in most people's minds, is not a nonviolent action. When you hear the phrase resist, you don't think of Gandhi hunger striking. You don't think of MLK marching down the street in a nonviolent protest. When you hear the word resist, you think a violent pushback because that's really what it means. And in my opinion, the media are forcing these things to happen more often than not because they constantly are covering this in a certain specific way, which is just feeding the fires 
I mean, it's throwing pure gasoline on people's already fragile, fucked up minds. And that's why we're seeing more of this happen now than ever. People sincerely are getting bombarded and they feel that there is no other option for them than to take this type of action. So again, that's my take on it. That was my, uh, my best shot as of right now. Again, there's no easy solutions to this. Uh, the, I, you know, if you're, if you will come to me saying, what do I say to these people about gun reform? They're shouting about it. There's really not much you can say to them right now because no one's going to listen to you. That's just the plain and simple truth. This is why I avoid social media these days, because I, I, when these things happen, I can get into arguments with people, but none of those arguments are going to do me any good. I can put out all the statistical arguments. I can put out all the logical arguments. Like I was looking, I was talking, the one I actually got a little engaged with today was Dave Smith had a, a post that he did about, again, fighting back against gun control. And you just have people on there just saying, oh, who cares what you think? You're an idiot. You don't have a degree. And you don't have a degree in criminal justice. It's like, well, why does that matter? It's a logical argument. But it's these back and forth flame wars and people just saying, again, an emotional response. It doesn't matter if you're coming at them with a logical argument. Their response is, well, something has to be done. It's not working. Meanwhile, they don't understand that by putting in whatever measures, these draconian measures they want to put into effect, probably are going to make a situation worse, not better. And they don't believe us when they say, well, criminals don't obey those laws. They say, well, yeah, but overall gun, guns uh, have dropped in all these other nations. But as I said, a lot of those are still suicides. A lot of those are still having to do with crime. And a lot of them are still just people going and stabbing people anyway and robbing people anyway. They have nothing to do with guns regardless because the motive is still there. And you know what I really enjoy too? Actually, here's an argument you can bring to your friends on Facebook. Because most of these people that are calling for gun bans and gun control, most of them are very, very privileged individuals. The people that yell the loudest on social media are some of the most absolute, not one percenters, but let's say top 3% of the population that cry the loudest for these things, that have the time and the money to go on Facebook all day long and read and, and, and read all their Huffington Post articles over and over again. These are the people that like to go and say, we need to end gun ownership. We need to repeal the Second Amendment, just have our military do it. But again, these people live in what is essentially a crystal, a crystal palace. Not like the terrible English Premier League team, but like they live in a, a white tower when you look at it legitimately. Like, I know so many of these assholes in Los Angeles. I was looking at one today. It's this girl I know. She's just saying, oh, we, we got to spin it. I'm like, I, and I typed, in, I typed in the comment. Then I just said, you know what? I deleted it. I have shit to do. I'm not going to get in a flame with this woman. But I regret deleting it. Because here's basically what I was saying. When you have that much privilege and you don't even know it, because you're not out there dealing with people that are coming into your apartment and robbing you. You're not walking out of the apartment onto a street where you might get shot, where you might get robbed. You're in the higher percentile. You live in a nice apartment building in Los Angeles. You probably even have a doorman. And most of these other assholes do too. They're making a good amount of money. They're making more than enough money to easily live on. They're not in poverty. They don't know what it's like to feel threatened. They don't know what it's like to have people that are actually out there eagerly looking to harm you to get ahead. No, these people are children of privilege. Yet they feel that they are entitled to tell the rest of us how to live. And again, this is the problem with government overall. And this is the problem with people, in my opinion, more than anybody else, with progressives overall. It's because most progressives are well off. Again, these are coastal people. I got to escape. Keep saying, I keep saying and again. I got to stop doing it. It's like a tick. It's like a goddamn bug in my brain pushing that button and again and again. I apologize, guys. I'm going to work on that. But you've got these East Coast elites living in cities making shit tons of money, living a very cosmopolitan, privileged life with police all over the place in their secure areas, and they just feel so safe and so entitled and so aware and so woke to tell everybody else how to live. You see in the Electoral College, they want to get rid of the Electoral College because, you know, we just should have straight democracy so we all can just go by what these idiots think. These are the people telling you to get rid of your guns. Because these are the people that have no concept of why you would need a gun in the first place. Because they are too privileged to understand that fact. Okay, let's take a quick commercial break. Then I'm going to come back with some final, final thoughts, which you will not want to miss, 
about gun control. And then we're going to get into the Catalan issue because that is a, a seamless segue and you'll find out why in just a minute. Hey guys, this is Roger Paxton, and if you're fed up with the government running every single aspect of your life, but you're not listening to the Lava Flow podcast yet, then what's wrong with you? Check us out at thelavaflow.com, or just go back to sucking up to the government. The Lava Flow podcast, striking the root every single episode. This is Chris Spangle, and I am the host of We Are Libertarians, which you can find in iTunes, Google Play, or at wearelibertarians.com. We are a podcast that brings you all of the irreverence that modern politics deserves by examining current events from a libertarian perspective. So please, check us out at wearelibertarians.com. Hey everyone, the Johnny Rocket Launchpad is Liberty. Each week we strive to bring you the best guests in talk radio. The Johnny Rocket Launchpad delivers weekly interviews of noteworthy politicians, experts, and activists. The Johnny Rocket Launchpad is bringing the party to the Libertarian Party and launching ideas in your direction. Check us out at johnnyrocketlaunchpad.com and you can hear me, Kurt Nelson, and the beautiful Heather Nixon talk about the ideas of liberty. Rock and roll. All right. Welcome back, guys. So last couple of things. First point, quickie. It is hilarious to me that all these people in Antifa aren't just advocates of gun rights, considering the fact that really gun ownership, being able to purchase firearms of any kind, whether it be automatic or semi-automatic or handguns or shotguns or whatever else, that is really a way to fight fascism. There's no more authoritarian position you can have than denying the basic ways to defend yourself to the populace. It basically assures that you have complete control. So all these dickheads out there saying that Trump is a fascist, Trump's an authoritarian, and then calling for stricter gun laws and gun control is completely insane and hypocritical. It's just it, 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 it defies words. It's so stupid. And the fact that they can't see that and put two and two together is a major issue. Because one of the things I also see with gun control is like you see people out there and they go, well— the, you know, the founding fathers, they didn't want us to have guns to just to protect from these the, the government. They, you know, they wanted militias. And then you had your federal government uh, to take care of all that other stuff. And a strictly regulated militia is basically the National Guard. This is an argument I saw somebody actually making on Facebook. Now, the issue with that is that, okay, if you're going to say that militias, which are supposed to be made of civilians that are on a volunteer basis owning their own firearms— should be just regulated to the National Guard, you're still giving the federal government complete and total control over all of the armament in the country. And again, what do you have? There's my end again. again. <laughs> I got to stop saying that. When you look at the origins of the United States, clearly the issue about Second Amendment rights and gun ownership is meant to protect us from the government. It's not even arguable. To overlook that, to overlook the fact that we had to overthrow a British government that wouldn't allow basic civil rights, basic basic rights that were guaranteed to Britons and would overly tax us without our representation and wouldn't allow us fair trials, all these type of things. We had to overthrow by force that government and use guns to do it. Clearly, the Second Amendment has its purpose, and that is the sole purpose, to make sure that the government cannot get into the position where it can evil, easily destroy its populace or control its populace and that there's always the threat of rebellion there to keep them honest. And I understand the argument where you say, well, at this point, the government would just kill us anyway. They've, they've got us outnumbered and outgunned. Well, while that's true in a sense, the British army also outnumbered the Americans by a massive amounts, had way more armaments, had way more uh, advanced technologies in warfare than the Americans did. And yet the Americans prevailed. In Vietnam, which is a war we lost, by the way, the Vietnamese, who had far less arms, they didn't have the helicopters, they didn't have all the, all the technology that we had, they came out on top because it was their country, they persevered, they'd used guerrilla tactics. So, you know what, it is actually very possible for a government to be overthrown by its people because, you know what, there's still a shit ton more of us. And by giving up all of the guns, you basically... I mean, I, that's it. You're, you're, you're turning over the government to, to fascism. You're allowing everything and anything to move forward. And I, it's especially confusing when you look at people who say, okay, we're anti-war, like myself. 
hugely anti-war. People on the left, hugely anti-war. And yet they want to turn the guns over, which basically is giving free reign to the military industrial complex, giving free reign to the war state to do whatever it wants because we can't do anything to stop them. And if nobody has guns here anymore, that's one more reason they can expand the local uh, military. They can expand the policing forces. They can further militarize local police departments because we've got to keep you safe. And now that nobody has guns, what's to stop them? What's to stop rampant militarism from running roughshod in this country? And let's segue to Catalan and the Catalonians. And they're, I mean, it just... These people right now, if you're watching the news, have been trying to get a referendum, trying to get the vote in, which they did one before, and it was 80% in favor of seceding from Spain. But the Catalonians, which is one of the most prosperous regions in Spain, it's where Barcelona is located, they want to get out. No more king, no more laws from Spain dictating what they can or can't do, and no more egregious taxation, because they are one of the most highly taxed areas in Spain as well. And meanwhile, when all of the issues hit Spain, all the economic issues, Catalan was hit harder than most because they are taxed out the ass. Meanwhile, they're not getting any of the economic support back from the broader Spain as a nation. But forget that. Just these people are independent anyway. They've got their own language. I mean, it's a region with its own solitary language. They identify as a different people. They are given their own government that's a sub-government within Spain, and yet... Spain is doing everything they can to stop them from from seceding, from declaring their independence. They're stopping them by force from voting. And if you saw some of the video footage that came out of Catalan and came out of Barcelona from them trying to vote, cops were brutal. It was disgusting. It was offensive. I saw people getting their hands broken. I saw people getting kicked downstairs that were trying to get medical help. People being stomped on the ground who were defenseless. I mean, literally, people just bleeding. A woman I saw get kicked down the stairwell by these cops? I mean, brutal, authoritarian, just awful, awful, grotesque behavior. And so, because it's so pertinent to our conversation right now, everybody is saying, oh my God, can you believe what's happening over in Spain right now? Can you believe what's being done to these poor people? They just want their freedom. They just want their independence. Now, You see the military response here. You see the government response. The police force is cracking down brutally. And I couldn't help but decide, hey, you know what? I should look up what Spain's gun laws are. So first uh, finding that came up on the old Google box is from the Library of Congress, Firearms Control Legislation and Policy, Spain. This is what it says. The regulation of guns in Spain is highly restrictive. The bearing of arms by citizens is not considered a right, but a privilege that may be granted by the government if legal conditions are met. And of course, automatic weapons are strictly forbidden to citizens. Let me ask you, where does that leave the people of Catalan? Where are the Catalonians? Hmm? And I'm probably saying Catalan wrong, but I don't really give a shit. What are they supposed to do now? Because... Guns are highly restricted. It's not a right. Under Spanish law, which these people are forced to obey, and I mean forced, they don't have the right to bear arms. They have no armaments that they can have. Clearly, the automatic weapons are restricted. So if the police are going to crack down and beat the shit out of these people if they try to have a vote to declare their independence, what alternatives are left to them? I mean, what time in history do we have where we have people calling for the disarmament of America and at the same time you have people across the globe getting the living shit kicked out of them by government and by police departments trying to declare their independence and those people are helpless. There you go, everybody. There's your argument in a nutshell. People say that now is not the time to think about these things, that that was the time in the past, hundreds of years in the past, that we had to worry about this type of things. Well, you're seeing it right now in Spain. So everybody, I will bid you adieu on that thought. 
So thank you so much for supporting Lions of Liberty. Thank you for listening to this here show and my singing. I encourage you to please join our Lions of Liberty Pride guys, where you're going to get bonus content from me, from Mark, from John Odermatt, including our Lions of our Libertarians of Living Rooms drinking liquor shows, our conspiracy theory shows, all sorts of cool stuff. Also want to recommend that you join the Facebook forum where you can have a nice, coherent conversation with people about the ideals of liberty. You can get your ammo, not your literal ammo necessarily, but get your ammo for intellectual debates, making sure that you are locked and loaded to encounter people on social media. I want to encourage you to follow us on Twitter at Lions of Liberty. Follow me at Brian McWilliams. Also, make sure you listen to our other shows. Mark, on Mondays, with his in-depth libertarian interviews, he just spoke with uh, Walter Block about abortion. That was pretty interesting, and evictionism. That was Monday's show, so check that out. And, of course, John Odermatt with Felony Fridays, always pulling in fascinating people from first giving firsthand accounts of the issues they have faced with justice reform. And, guys, please, please, please share the show. Please tell your friends. We're truly trying to grow this. Please give us a review on iTunes. And please do buy some Electric Liberty Land shirts because they look great and you look great in them. All right, guys, from me, Brian McWilliams from the Lions of Liberty and from Electric Liberty Land, always stay plugged in to Liberty.